Hey, memory lapse is banned. Um, is black discard back on the menu? This is a deck I liked playing a little bit before Just Guy kind of had its stranglehold over the format. It's got a lot of good cheap interaction, like Helix and discard spells and some Claim the Firstborn. Gets a lot of great uh, pieces of spot removal out of the sideboard and Magma Spray and things like Vanishing Verse and Noxious Grasp. Um, we had a good mix of proactivity as well with our things that make tokens. With Leon and Lightscribe, we kind of have a build our own Monastery Mentor. We've got uh, Silver Quill Command, which synergizes very well with Dreadhorde Arcanist. Dreadhorde Arcanist flashes back spells with, with converted mana cost equal to or less than its power. So you could Silver Quill Command, give this plus three, plus three, and then attack with it flashback Silver Quill Command on something else for a really big burst. Let's go ahead and jump on into some games with uh, with this one and see how it goes. So for thanks for the thirty one months, Williams. Welcome back, and Danny G. Thanks for the five. Yeah, yeah. They should be they should be giving people wild cards for nerfs. I agree. Honestly. If you asked me what I think they should be doing, um, past just giving people wild cards for cards that are, are banned slash nerfed, I think when they, I think when they ban or change the text of a card, they should give people something like a one week window or something to deconstruct other cards that were key in those decks to get wild cards back for them. Like they they get rid of uh, memory lapse, they should give you a chance to like cash out your hero of dominarias and your your lightning helixes or something. Like give you give you some X amount of you can trade these cards back in for wild cards or something else. Yeah, yeah, but Winota and uh Angrath Marauders is a great example. Nobody nobody is ever going to use Angrath Marauder anywhere else. So they they effectively banned that card and didn't didn't give people resources for it. See if they have a second color in their, uh... They could be full-on knights. The Snowland implies they're probably mono white. Our hand is not particularly good against aggro, and we were on the draw. If we can find a Lightning Helix, the hand becomes really good really quickly. Did, we did roll past 69,000 followers. All right, we didn't regret the thoughts. He's God bless. Angel Fire as a replacement for Silver Quill Command could be quite good. I don't. Why? Why would that be quite good? Could you explain? Was not the lightning helix we wanted for Christmas. Those cards, those cards do like so. Uh, the angel fire does exactly one of the things Silver Quill Command does, but Silver Quill Command isn't wouldn't be good if all it did was kill the opponent. Silver Quill Command is good because it's flexible. Do this. Thanks for the over three years, Wee McGee. Welcome back.
I think I want to keep these two together because this enables this to flashback this. Should have been greedy and bottom to land shit. Yes. Goodbye, friends. I'd like the record to reflect that even in a memory lapse format, being on the play is busted. In case there, in case there is anybody wondering about that, if there is any, if there is any confusion. Thirty-nine months, Kijin guy. Welcome back. Chill on this. Oh. With rest in peace and magistrate, I think I might trim some of these dread hordes in the post board game and the third game. I have a lot of ways to stop this from doing stuff. So the follow marker. Actually, kind of behind here at this point, huh? this to start. Is historic better? I mean, it can't possibly be worse, right? Famous, famous last words. So I can tap the wellspring to Helix the Lumiarch. I probably need to kill the... Probably need to kill the, the other thing there, right? I guess I could draw another card. So I could Helix the Lumiarch attack, throw away the Dreadhorde Arcanist to make another token and draw another card. I kind of like that. Why is it making me click on all of them individually? I don't understand. For the 17 months, Nixie, welcome back. I mean, the mana base in this deck needs the white source, so you can't just like cut. Like your the ratios change, and you have to swap some dual lands around. I think I think Castle is the best creature land in the deck. That's why I'm playing it, just for reference. Castle Castle doesn't even just fuel. Castle doesn't even just fuel, um, like Leonin. It fuels things like Village Rights too, which is valuable. Yeah, Castle's Castle's much better against control. Is accurate.
I'm definitely okay trading this for like faces haven plus Thaddeus Lieutenant, so. Can I cycle this? We could hit a magma spray to kill the lieutenant. Okay, so if I Vanishing Verse Thalia, we get some tokens. And then we can Silver Quill Command, make a token plus three, plus three, plus Edict them. I think it's right to be aggressive here. It could have been right to like not do this and just draw a card. But I think I, I think I like pressuring them. So if they bring back a two, they're at a virtual six and then they're exactly dead on board. I don't watch a whole lot of a whole lot of network TV. Oh yeah, they could put a counter on Luris with Aspirant. That's true. Should leave them alive. Oh, they have an extra blocker in Faceless Haven now. We drew a land, rats. Okay, I guess I guess we're just chilling. One point short there, and the game gets harder from here. We really need like another village rights or silver quill command, something to generate some card advantage. I think I'm fine trading this for Bodyguard. This forces them to choose between replaying Bodyguard to continue to protect the Luris or playing out something else. It's for the follow where edge. Yeah, I think on average, Castle is going to be a lot better than Cave of the Frost Dragon, though. I decided to start late today because I didn't feel like playing Standard to start this morning, and the patch, patch didn't go live until 10 a.m. I think I forgot to post on Twitter, but I posted in Discord. We're not, we're not going to do a variety game at the end of the stream. We're just going to play three or four historic decks today.
The only minus 500 is Wizards having their patches at 8 a.m. PST. I don't know if this is lethal, but probably is. Aratog, thank you for the very generous tier three and for the almost three and a half years. I think they wanted to save, um, I think they wanted to save the Haven to be able to block. That's why they didn't put a counter on it. I don't agree, so it's probably lethal, yep. Yeah. So they have portable hole, rest in peace, and possibly the all humans get bigger. I think I want at least one fracture. I want to trim a couple of these because they have so many, so many hate cards for it. I'm bringing an Angraph. Honestly, cling to dust gets pretty bad too. Chat, the people that keep recommending Angel Fire Ignition, this card is good because it's flexible. Angel Fire Ignition has exactly one mode. It does one thing. Silver Cold Command does four things. So you're right, Angel Fire Ignition does one of the four things Silver Cold Command does, but that's it. That's all it does. Fan sweet. A little bit painful on the mana, but... Removal spells, discard spells all sound good. No one drop is really good for us. Um, I think I just take their threat and plan to go long, right? Witchy poo, dodging the portable hole is nice. Chromian Jones, thank you for the six months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So I'm looking like it's gonna be a runaway here. Opponent, Opponent agrees that the game has run away. We're on the draw that game too. Sweet start to the set. Woke up today and forgot what I was supposed to do. Guess I had a lapse of memory. Instead, I decided to watch your stream all day for Lapse for Historic. I made a submission through the submission link. Thanks, Snad. Um, I will take a look at the link and drop you an email back for future reference. Wait to donate until I tell you I'm okay playing your deck. If it ends up not being okay, I'll ship you a refund. Has this stream been peer-reviewed by chance? Skillfully left the card we didn't want through the thought season on top of the deck. Uh, I'm using the default artworks that Magic loaded into my deck when I imported cards. 
I must have incidentally gotten the Japanese version of this and not incidentally gotten the Japanese version of Claim. Hey, sounds good, Stead. Thank you. Opponent playing five color Niv? What happened to Mono White in game three? We played a discard spell and two removal spells and they conceded. I wonder if they're reanimator. Or they could just be trying to enable territorial Kavu. Oh, they have removal spell for PZ2. Their draw is so good. Feels bad, man. I do not intend to hold a historic tournament until Wizards gives us a new direct to historic card release. Our next tournament is actually scheduled for one month from today and it will be standard after Crimson Bow releases. Although maybe not. I don't know. I guess they're leaving Aldrin's Epiphany legal. I mean, the next tournament will be historic. I'm gonna stew on it. They banned, they banned Memory Lapse and they're leaving Aldrin's Epiphany legal. So maybe I don't wanna run a standard tournament. Here's the goes. Jim Davis will be back for the next one. We're in a pretty bad spot here. So this Crocs is coming into play. They already said in the ban list update yesterday that they would not be addressing Alderaan's Epiphany until after Crimson Vow releases. I do not intend to run a custom ban list tournament. Custom ban list tournaments are incredibly unpopular. There is a vocal minority of people that claim to like custom ban list tournaments, but when push comes to shove and you look at the actual metrics, they are always bad. So that is not something I will be doing, doing again. I would rather, rather run no tournament than a custom ban list tournament based on the metrics that I've had. So we want the discard spells out here. Our removal's kind of awkward into what they have going on. Like neither Fracture, I guess they have Chandra. So maybe like a Fracture's fine. They could have Miscellaneous. Spray to Exile Croc is, Crocs is really fucking awkward. Like you get, you get two for one still. I think, I think I'd rather just have a bunch of Helixes to race them by going to the dome. They had Croxa and they had Kavu. Thanks for the five months, Canadian Bacon. Welcome back. Thanks for the Prime Hulk. Yeah, Cling to Dust is a fine, a fine main deck answer. I think that us is like our mono black can trip that also offers various utility in matchups like this. It's nice. There's actually quite, quite a large number of 
incidental pieces of graveyard hate in the current standard format. There's a lot of things that they tacked like exile a card in a graveyard onto. Actually, I think it's one of the better things they did with design while coming back to a flashback set. Uh, it's looking like my stuff for the overlay rework is big getting pushed back to next week. So untapped land here is our ideal draw. It will let us angrath this territorial Kavu. It should be great. Uh, I kind of feel like I'd be surprised if they're a shadow deck. They haven't had that many shock clans, and they haven't been shocking aggressively. Speaking of incidentally exiling from graveyards, goodbye, Croxa. It might have been wrong to give up my wish to which to push three damage here. That untap lands. All right. Okie doke. Here be monsters. I want to get rid of their season pyromancer more than I want to rummage this fracture. So Angrath is dead. I have Wellspring left over as a resource still. I like how it says zero top when they surveil to the top. It is, it is big boomer jun vibes. They've got like the territorial cavus to stand in for uh, Charmergoyf. And they drew Chandra, brutal. I knew er, be easy. I think we're done here. Our, our removal spells were super awkward into them. Vanishing verse. Uh, Really pretty poor into territorial Kavu and friends.
I, I have no idea, Daisy, and I prefer not to speculate on stuff like that. I know there's a, there's a ton of keywords that like have played out fine in arena that seem real awkward in paper. Like I can't like having a, an adventure card zone sounds super awkward in practice, for example. Dealing six to ourselves in the first couple of turns here is not a good luck. Eh, morph, morph is pretty clearly defined where the cards are. Whereas like with adventures, you have things in the exile zone that you can always be casting. Yeah, spell spellbinders, tax, foretell, those are other other similarly awkward things, I think. I mean, the cleric deck just tracking life totals like not that big of a deal. Stuff like stuff like that's just counting, I don't mind. It's more more so like these are and when I'm talking about difficulty, I'm more so talking about things like, you know, clarity on which things are in which zones, for example. I'm gonna attack with this and thought seize this last card out of their hand so they can't clone the Strixter. Man, none of those are uh, are the white source I wanted for Christmas chip. Land is good for us. The dust looking excellent here. Dojo does not contain fear, Chip. I'm doing this now, just in case they have a counter spell in their main deck. Let's get the life gain while the life gain is good. Knew that was probably a blank. We were just paying the life basically to uh, get in a good attack here. Let's chill on those for now and just ship for six. All right, so discard spells out here for sure. At the very least, Thought Seize, Magma Sprays, Vanishing Verse. So that guy is probably okay too. So 62 cards. Probably happy to see the first cling. I don't know that I want multiple. Same with Silver Coal Command. I want Noxious Grass probably here, right? I have plenty of green fish, I think. Yeah, they have Kamena Speaker and they have the Lord. Yeah, winning the game where we did six damage to ourselves in the first two turns is first two turns is nice against Zegra. Right, 
Sure. What's going on, Boneless Wing? I actually had a historic deck scheduled to post today, but it had memory lapse in it, so I had to delete delete the video I had already edited and uh, redo it for something else. Feels, feels bad, man. So, if I don't do this now and they have another copy of this card or they clone this card, my Magma Spray can't kill them, so I think I just take the kill. Feels good to have played around that. You're a Oglandian. That's great, Sleeping Pill. Your deck was sweet. I am. Uh, thanks for the. Uh, thanks for the link. Okay, so. I think I want to Inquisition plus first this turn. And I don't intend to block with this. Let's attack with it. She's menacing. Hey, thanks for the 24 months, Arla Quinn. Welcome back. Looks pretty over. Yeah, Collected Company is definitely the card that kind of keeps Murpho coming along, for sure. They're getting priority here. I think I'm just going to pass. This could be a company. Just like that, they're right back in it. This is the other card alongside company that generates them a lot of advantage, so. Indestructible. Draws them cards. Man, if we draw a uh, an instant or sorcery next turn, we are going to pippity pop right on off. I'm gonna say no blocks on this one this time because I want the extra attackers. We could be super wide if we draw an instant or sorcery. Come on, just any instant or sorcery deck. Just literally anyone. It's bad, man. Any instant or sorcery deck. Any any instant or sorcery. This is this is where the magic happens, Chet. Right here. Right here on your screen. High skill, low variance TCG High gameplay. Just isn't good enough. It's for the 34 months, Pizza. Welcome back.
this card would have happened last turn, we'd have won the game on the spot. It's fine. Only game three on the play. Pretty fortunate for the opponent there. They drew a uh, collected company into their best hit, and then immediately after, we just like drew a bunch of lands and died. That's just how magic works a lot of the time. So the 10 months, Brute Sheem. That'll be, that'll be the type of game where if that if this, if this match ends up on the highlights channel, that game won't be included because it just like wasn't a game of magic worth watching. There wasn't anything particularly interesting or to learn from there. Now, if you've wondered what's the difference between the Daily Deck Digest and just other long form YouTube content, that's the main difference. I, I delete the games that aren't I, it isn't all me winning on the new channel but it is all me playing games of magic that are like actually meaningful games I'm supposed to save these for lords. Oh, they don't have a play. That's good for us. Now, Screw does typically beat Flood. We have two spells left, and we know they have a minimum of five spells up here. So I actually, I actually think, especially with the land draw here, that we're behind at the moment. Nice, Dwight. Okay, that's a, that's a banger series of draws. We take this. Knocked in their fourth land, made no plays. Whatever could it mean, chat? Whatever could it mean? Could be anything. Well, the aggressive relic cycle there does mean that I get to flash back this Magma Spray next turn, which is great for us. Yikes. It's a good draw. There are not any any spreading seas effects in this format. Almost had a huge misclick there trying to set a stop. Our deck seems a lot better when we draw instants and sorceries, chat. That's, it's, re it's really weird. Somebody, somebody write that down. See, those of you taking notes at home.
Oh, I clicked on a thing by mistake. We should do that more often. Strong, strong sound advice. Man, playing a deck with access to rest in peace is probably a pretty good, pretty good decision. Feels, feels like there's been a lot of very graveyard centric decks, which I think, I think makes sense. A lot of these kind of graveyard mid range decks were kind of held down by, were kind of held down by, uh, by Jeskai to expect people to be picking them back up. Uh, nothing too specific, Gregor. I imagine it's going to take a few months to a year or more for the new channel to like get metrics that are larger than my existing channel. Like my existing channel has almost 30,000 subs on it and the new one has about 2,000. So it's pretty fairly dwarfed in size. At the at the moment, videos are doing decent in terms of metrics. So for being a smaller channel, though, I think they're getting like 500 to a thousand views per video, which is very reasonable, given that we've been at it a week. I think I want to just take their cruxes here. The life gain isn't exciting, but denying them a 6 6 next turn is good. Watch this middle of third cruxa. Just a looting deal. Yeah, definitely, Wibos. Decent pickups here. They are digging for a crux, though. On FGC, thanks for the half a year. Welcome back. Good morning, good morning. All 
Are they dead? Pretty close, right? Yeah, I think, I think this is putting them to one. Each of these helixes does six, and then we had five already, so it's six, six, five is 17. They were at 18. Good shit. I think we might want slightly more graveyard hate in our sideboard if these, uh, these Luris Cruxa decks are going to be popular. Popular. So they have Darcy, among other things. Honestly, another another three mana Kaya is probably great, huh? Exiles, exiles Darcy and attacks their graveyard if they don't have Darcy out. Might not need eight one mana discard spells. Are they an Arcanus deck? Well, we can play one-sided Graveyard Hate Boneless, like Gaia. I mean, we saw a lot of their deck there and didn't see Arcanus. Obviously, they, they could have it, but... Thanks for the follow manga zone. Yeah, let's, let's plan to adjust our, adjust our sideboard after this. Maybe rearrange our uh, removal spells. Hey, thanks for the over two years distinction. Welcome back. I think I think I'd like to play Kaya. I don't think Ashiok Static Text is very good in this format. Chat, your Delver deck wasn't playable with Memory Lapse. Without Memory Lapse, please stop trying. They, they did, in fact, finally do the thing, Dougie. Thanks for the 40 months. Welcome back. Rocks it next turn. Our, uh, lack of instants and sorceries here is big sad. Would Brainstorm make Delver playable? I don't know. Cause it's not it's not just a matter of would Brainstorm make Delver better, it's would Brainstorm make decks that prey on Delver better than Delver is getting is a question. Yeah, they, they topped a card here, so I'm kind of expecting like land Croxa and then we're dead. Yeah. I think we need I think we need more answers to Croxa in R75. Our deck's super light on them currently. Which uh this list is card for card, something that I was playing before the, the most recent bands. So 
Croxa wasn't really a card in the format. This is our second Croxa opponent today, and I'm kind of expecting an uptick in that. So we're going to retool our Graveyard Hate Suite and what removal spells we're playing after this match, I think. Yeah, to the magic zoomers in the audience that are like always, always appropriately confused by why people like Delver of Secrets. When Delver of Secrets was printed for the first time, you got to play it in standard with Phyrexian mana spells, Vapor Snag, and Ponder. So it was so much better than it is in even Historic because you got to play it with Ponder. Yeah, you have to play Gataxian Probe in your deck too, so your deck just like had artificially more spells in it. You just like got to cheat on land count because you were playing a 56 card deck. have an unholy heat again here, Sedge. It's almost like Ponder and Probe were the good cards and Delver just happened to work with them. Weird, right? Oh, our mana's kind of awkward here. I actually can't Light Scribe and Helix next turn. Maybe I'm supposed to just play a Tap Sevi try on a Light Scribe. Uh, yeah, J Rain. Planning to uh, planning to start that after this one, about half an hour. And I did I did adjust the sideboard. I cut some of the anti anti control cards. Added some more spot removal. Yeah, I think we're gonna just get slaughtered by this Crocs again here. Kai off the top, one time dealer. And they they looted a land, so I assume they have one in hand. No, it looks like the fair deck tryhards have mostly moved to black base mid range whiskey. We've also only been playing for an hour. Well, I mean, as far as series of draws go, that was, uh,. That was quite the banger. I can't kill them, right? Okay, we'll just village rights. Things that are good against Croxa, that, yeah. Slightly above average turn. And that is, honestly, this is one of the upsides to playing this deck is even though we're an answer deck at a certain point, um, our deck does just have a strong amount of proactivity to it. So even when we don't have the perfect answers, we can still just kill them. Yeah, so I do, I do, I know we won that, but we were a little bit fortunate to win that. I still want to adjust our removal suite slash graveyard, graveyard plan. I think I want another three mana Kaya. And I want a couple of Doom Blades in the sideboard that deal with Kruxa. Now I think there's a good chance that Jund Food has become will become the best deck in this format post uh 
post lap span. It was already very good pre lap span. What removal spells can I play that get rid of that get rid of Croxa? Is Legion Zen the best one? We can play it. We can play a Deccan Stone. Is Deccan Stone better than Legion's End? I kind of want. I kind of want to exile. Ooh, I like the idea of Go Blank a lot. I'm gonna cut both these dresses and put two Go Blanks in the board. I'm gonna coward split deck and stone and legion's end. Sounds like a good plan for now. All right, let's try. It. Let's try that. Claim plus rates in the opener against Dolores decks, probably a pretty good start. Yeah, I think we want the removal to trigger our, our creatures and be flashable back with Dreadhorde. In a perfect world. So we'll do this, they'll sack a creature, we'll hit them for four, we'll flashback Silver Cold Command, they'll sacrifice their other creature, we'll draw a card. What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Whatever shall I discard, Chip? two months Adi. do i want to just flash back the claim for a damage or do i want to just cash in this light scribe for two cards you want to rates the arcanist i don't think i want to rates the arcanist i could wait maybe racing the arcanist is right Uh, I was going to get plus one here. 
Uh, if you sack this, the card goes to its owner's hand, and we'd still discard our hand, so that's quite bad. Joke's on you, opponent. I was expecting the Inquisition. Tactically played around it. Hey, chat, the moose is loose. So close, yet so far away. Third lightning helix off the top. Third lightning helix off the top. Had to have Soul Guide Lantern here, main deck. Brutal. It's not a whole lot, a whole lot we could do here. The, pr the problem, chat, is that the Crocs is coming back into play. So like I'm not I'm not dead this term, but I can I can no longer win the game. Oh, I could take one draw step at claim to kill them. You're right. I could have I could have drawn with this and if our top card we were one in 39 to kill them there. Exactly, exactly claim would have killed them. That's fine. Unlikely to work, but good good, good shout out. That being said, you know third Croxa deck in a row get to bring in our cards that we decided to plan for for this matchup. We got a trim actually. I have too much here because I kind of want Go Blink too. Our Vanishing Verses are better here because they're uh... Maybe Helix isn't good? I guess Helix kills Dragon Rage Chandler. Maybe Silver Quill Command's a little slow. They have like miscellaneous bad creatures looking around the end. I got like Coward Split the difference, like Trim 2 and 2 here. Alright, let's try that. Well, Jun Food for reference doesn't doesn't play Crocs the Duck Doo Little. For people that haven't kept up on historic variations. How many lands do you run for these low to the ground decks? I, I guess I'm confused by why you're asking that. One, there's not like a generic answer. Like it depends on a lot of factors. And two, you could just like look at my deck list to know how many lands I'm currently playing in this, this specific deck. But like again, in general, there aren't like these clear cut, always do this, never do this type things for magic. That's part of, part of the reason why magic is a game worth playing. Because, like, the answer is, it depends. Look at the context. Look at all the factors surrounding it.
So go blanks like the best draw on our deck at this point. Continue to flood and die as well. It's a strong line. They get to escape Kraxa here, so we're probably dead. It is not. It has a three, because we can pay three to put it in our hands. Or technically dead if they have two lands in hand. Rats, they have a spell chip. They found they found the line. See, they're much they're much luckier than we are. We've just had mono lands in all these games and have to keep taking three from Croxa triggers. Wise of wise of them to draw spells. A true a true visionary before their time. Wow, and they lucked into Delirium. Oh man, what a brutal set. I don't know if there's anything to really learn or change there. I think I'm pretty happy with uh, the changes that we made to the sideboard. We definitely feels like we need help here, but a lot of that was just like we took extra damage because we just didn't have spells. More fishies. We take their land, right? Just that two months, what? Honestly, it's going to stem the bleeding here. I mean, there have any instants or sorceries in hand. Yeah, I agree. I think this card's a great example of what whiny crybabies boomer magic players tend to be. There are so many people complaining about magic becoming hearthstone with digital only cards and this is such an elegant example of just like a neat design that you can easily do in digital that you can't really do in paper that has nothing to do with variants it's a it's in fact it's a very variance reducing card right Just from just from a core design perspective, I think the card is just superb. It's one of those days, chat. It's one of it's one of those days.
Okay. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, lizard on a chair. Take my hands. We'll make it, I swear. We're sure we're, we are we are gonna run so good with the Eggdigmatic Incarnation deck here in a minute. Our, cum our cumulative variance right now is fucking huge, chat. They appear to be flooding a little bit here too, so we could have a uh, have a chance. So if we draw a lightning helix next turn, we're in this still. It's like the fourth game in a row with 50 plus percent lands. We're on 23, right? Yeah, we're on 20. We're on 23, and three of our lands are utility lands. So, from a is the deck constructed appropriately standpoint, I think the answer is firmly yes. Just gotta shake it off and hope for better beats in the next one. Cut the discard spells, bring in some more cheap removal, click submit. I have three spell lands, Tumos. We're actually just flooding and not drawing spell lands. I did bring in Grasp last time. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably fine. It's like eight things. It's actually probably not fine. I have different, I have more removal spells in my sideboard this time. Zipples with the custom duration timeout. There's service with a smile. What does the shovel mean? The shovel tells your story as a beginning peon here in Hoaglandia, working hard in the trenches. Ready, ready to work. Yep. Deep, deep breaths, Chet. Just like I tell my seven-year-old when he gets upset with his game. Deep breaths. There is a non-zero chance the next open will be historic instead of standard, yes. Wizards, Wizards decided to not address Aldrin's epiphany and decided to address memory lapse, so yeah.
the pattern of at least one playable format continue. Yeah, honestly, like, you know, that is, that is a big upside. Wizards, Wizards at least does us the kindness of trying to manage one format at a time. That is correct. If you're asking for it, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, it's perfectly appropriate, Lampton. Yikes. the year and a half, Snooty. Welcome back. It's like Merfolk and Slivers are both popular. Um, you go to jeffhoagland.com and click Historic Decks and search Tribal on the right side. I don't think we're going to be able to beat two collected companies, two silver galette ups. This is 10, we go to four. That's the start of chaining a couple of removal spells together, but we'll see. Scavenging. Scavenging is quite good here. Hopefully they try to crack this clue or eat something with Scavenging Ooze and then we can Helix. Okay, sweet. So now, now I can Helix this in response and they don't have enough green mana to save it. So they do have two draws here because of the clue from my deck in stone, but if they draw two bricks in a row, we have some chump blockers that could draw another removal spell and stay in the game. Any, any merfolk lets them tap two things here, which is kind of medium for us. done with this deck. I also think that I'm going to take this deck. I have had this deck in the high potential deck section on my website and I think I'm going to be demoting it down to fan favorite because the power level just doesn't really feel like it's there. I know that I know that we flooded in a few of those games, but even in the games that we weren't flooding in all honesty, the power level of what we were doing felt a little bit low. 
the go wide decks felt challenging um, to keep up with in terms of being able to kill their stuff and stay alive. And the Croxa decks felt like they just had better grind than we did. This deck's a little bit less susceptible to graveyard hate than the Croxa decks are, but in the in the heads up matchup, I definitely would rather be on the Croxa deck side of the board than whatever side of the board this deck's on. So that's deck's kind of cute. If you like playing it, you probably get some wins with it. But I think ultimately from a power level perspective, this isn't one that I would recommend playing 